In comparison to other body organs, kidneys are relatively smaller, but here is a fact. They perform one of the most important functions. They receive a quarter of the blood of the cardiac output and filter around 180 liters of blood every day, meaning that the entire blood volume passes through them around 60 times every day. The kidneys are situated between the transverse processes of the T12L3 vertebrae, with the left kidney generally sitting slightly higher than the right. This asymmetry is due to the positioning of the liver and stomach. The liver pushes the right kidney downward, while the stomach raises the left kidney slightly. The upper poles of both kidneys, at T12, are closer to the spine than the lower poles, at L3. The kidney hilum typically aligns with the L2 vertebra, so the ureter can be seen running downwards from the L2 level along the sides of the spine. Um, now let's focus on the borders of the kidneys. These bean-shaped organs have two borders, medial and lateral. The lateral border faces outward towards the periphery, while the medial border is oriented towards the midline. The medial border features a crucial landmark known as the hilum, which serves as the entry and exit point for the kidneys, vessels, and ureter. Internal anatomy. The kidney's parenchyma comprises the outer renal cortex and the inner renal medulla. The primary unit of the medulla is the renal pyramid. Each kidney contains eight, 18 renal pyramids, which appear as triangles in a coronal section, with their bases facing the cortex and their apices pointing toward the hilum. The apex of each pyramid projects medially into the renal sinus and is called the renal papilla, which opens into a minor calyx. Multiple minor calyces combine to form a major calyx. Typically, there are two to three major calyces in the kidney, superior, middle, and inferior, which merge to create the renal pelvis. The ureter then emerges from the renal pelvis and exits the kidney through the hilum. The pyramids are separated by extensions of the cortex, known as the renal columns. Vasculature arteries. Each kidney receives blood from a single renal artery, a direct lateral branch of the abdominal aorta. Upon entering the kidney through the hilum, the renal arteries divide into anterior and posterior branches. The posterior branch supplies the posterior part of the kidney, while the anterior branch splits into five segmental arteries, each supplying a different renal segment. These segmental arteries further branch into interloba arteries, which in turn branch into arcuate arteries. The arcuate arteries then branch into interlobular arteries, which give rise to afferent arterioles that carry blood to the glomerulus for filtration. The kidney has an exceptionally rich blood supply. Venous drainage. After leaving the nephron, the capillaries condense to form interlobular veins. Similar to the arterial branches, the interlobular veins merge to become arcuate veins at the base of the medullary pyramids, and then interlobar veins. About five or six interlobar veins join to form each renal vein. Unlike the arterial branches, the tributaries of the renal vein communicate with each other,